praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Happy Friday. Listen, we have made it through this work week. And I bless the Lord for it. Amen. I just want to uh, talk about the call and the purpose that God has for your life. And as always, let's get started with the prayer. So dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. I pray, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be found acceptable in thy sight. For you are my strength and my redeemer. I bless and I praise you, O oh God, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. So praise the Lord, everyone. This morning commute is a little different, <laughs> but I bless the Lord that the roads are dry, so, and all things give thanks, right? So I want to talk to you guys about the call and the purpose that God has on your life. A lot of times, so the first thing I want to talk about is identifying the call on your life. A lot of times people think that, you know, you have to do these, um, you know, deep things to figure out what the call is. You can simply inquire of God. A lot of times it's already what's in you, what you do naturally, what you do without practice. You know, like uh, some people, they may uh, play instruments, right? And they just learned it, right? No one really taught them. They were able to pick up an instrument and then they were able to uh, use it and use it well. Well, while others may have went to school for it, right? So it's that thing that comes naturally to you. It's that thing that you can do with your eyes closed, something that you did not have to uh, seek out or learn per se, but it was something that was already planted on the inside of you. But it is also um, one of those things that we could just simply ask God, God, what is it that you want me to do? What is my purpose? Because once you find out what your purpose is, it makes you live differently, you know? And then, the thing of it is, is it makes you live differently if you're willing to be obedient to God. Now, if you're like Jonah, you're like, hey, I'm not trying to do that. Then it can be a little bit more difficult because you'll find yourself just hitting doors and hitting walls. And the thing of it is, is some people say things like, oh, well, you know, my age or my limitation, my finances, my this, my that. Listen, God doesn't, God doesn't need you to do it. He's already put it in you to do. So, you know, there are things that sometimes we think because we've done this, that this won't work anymore. Listen, I don't care what you've done. The blood cover it. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, the new is here, the old is passed away. So you're in a new place, right? When you step into God and let's say you step into God and you backslid. It's okay. If you truly repent and not the, I'm sorry, I have intentions to do it again, but the Lord, I'm sorry. I, I did not honor you and I have no intentions of doing this again, I'm turning my back on sin, then he has forgiven you, right? And, and if you don't know, you can ask him, but that's what his word says, that he is just, you know, that he is faithful to forgive us of all unrighteousness, right? So, you know, people will try and put a, a price tag on this sin and on that sin, right? No, sin is sin across the board, right? Unless it's blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. And even with that, it does not say one sin is greater than the other. The other thing is that when you ask God for your purpose and you don't want to carry it out it not only affects you but it affects those people who is attached to the obedient side of you fulfilling the call and the purpose on your life we see where Jonah tried to run from the call on his life and because he tried to run you know he found himself in situations where he was you know people were doing different things um, like he was on the boat and they were like hey where the storm come he knew where it was he had to be thrown off the boat he got swallowed up you know all of these different things had to happen to him before he was obedient listen I always say there's two ways that God is going to get us to do the things that he wants us to do it's going to be one simply asking us to or telling us, should I say. The other thing is that he is going to uh, tap us on our shoulder, meaning that it's gonna come a little differently. So I honestly recommend that you do the first one, that you say, okay, God, I surrender. I'll do what it is you want me to do, even though this is not what I designed to do. You know, this is not what I prefer to do, excuse me. And a lot of times is you'll find out the very things that God has put in you, you know, like what makes people study rocks and birds? God put those things in people, right? That is their purpose. That is um, for his fulfillment so that people can reveal things, so that we can learn things, so we can find out what's beneficial to us, what's not beneficial to us, right? God is not against science, right? And we, and science should not be against God. True science should not be against God. It should be exploring the things that God has put on this earth. So I just want to encourage you to accept the call on your life. Do not run 
one. You know, yes, Nineveh still was able to repent and turn from their wicked ways, but Jonah could have got there a little bit quicker had he not tried to detour or tried to uh, give up on the assignment of God. So I want to encourage you guys on today to make sure you answered the call. Listen, there are so many things happening in this world right now that God is in need of people. The Bible says that, that the work is plentiful, but the workers are few. And what that means is who's going to work for God? You know, who's going to stand up for God? Many are called, but few are chosen, right? So my thing is, you know, some people say, well, how do you know if you're called and how do you know if you're chosen? Listen, God is not a respecter of person. God will use you if you want to be used. All you have to do is surrender. A lot of times we lay our lives down to God, but then we want to pick back up our lives and tell God how to live our life. You know, we treat God as, you know, sometimes as a genie in a bottle, you know, like, hey, God, this is what I want. Make this happen. Instead of God, what do you want to happen? You know, there, there was a dream that my daughter had recently and I didn't understand it. And I told the Lord, you know, I prayed one way and then I went back to the Lord and I said, you know what, Lord, you know all things, Lord. I said, God, show me what it is. How do you want me to pray about this situation? Because sometimes we can get so fixated in our own minds about what it is that we want that we don't realize that it may not be the will of God. And that's why it says, you know, we ought to pray for the will of God because we don't know what to pray. You know, the very thing we can be praying for is the very thing we turn around and ask God a year later to take away so it's so important to figure out what his will is so I want to encourage you with all that's in me to really answer the call that God has on your life a simple yes can do so many things you know Joseph being obedient to the Lord at the appropriate time was so beneficial to not only just his brothers but those who came to the land to be able to purchase things it's so important that we make sure that we're positioned that whoever God needs to uh, however God needs to maneuver in our life that we are able to do it for the other person and for ourselves and not just them but for God of course we want to give him that fresh yes we want to say yes to the will of God and the plans of God because at the end of the day when we say yes to God there's peace to it there's there's such, there's a peace that you cannot get anywhere else I don't care what type of spa you go to you can't get the peace that passes all understanding unless you're in his perfect will so do not run from the call God has called you for such a time as this and it's time for you to take your place in the kingdom and all things be blessed and have a wonderful and i do mean wonderful friday